Today I'm going to do a video on sidewalks. Old school versus new school. Old tradition versus new tradition. And what it's going to be about is pavers versus concrete. I just spent uh, two weeks in China and then I was just over in Scandinavia. I've been there five times and I took a look, good look at the way they do their sidewalks compared to the way we do our sidewalks in the USA. China and Scandinavia is pretty much the same thing. I started the video out in China. I didn't know I was going to do Scandinavia. So I'm just going to let it run through China first and Scandinavia in the second part. So here we go. Hi, I'm Mike Haddock and I'm in Beijing, China. This is where they held the Olympics. And I went around here walking for a week and I'm looking at their sidewalks. And all their sidewalks are either paver or marble. Uh, I went to those old where the emperor stayed the summer house, I looked at all their stuff and I filmed different ideas because I like the old school method. All my videos are food for thought. I like old school, the way they did it. It's been there for four, five, six, seven, eight hundred years and it's good. Our roads in PA and our sidewalks, uh, we put concrete. In the winter time, the south comes over, they all fall apart. Next couple years they're there with jackhammers and backhoes and dump trucks around here is uh, one of the pavers is bad they just pick it up put a new one down and they're done so I'm a big fan of old school I'm gonna show you little things as we go make your own opinions so here we go I hope you enjoy the video uh, this is a typical sidewalk the pavers these blocks right here are for blind people so they follow them down and when they hit this and when they hit these dots, that means there's a turn. And then they could turn and they follow it again. And they walk right to where the stop is. That means there's a stop. And you notice they all have granite curbs. So that's a typical sidewalk of Beijing, China. Now we're in the subway and I want to show you. Here's the parts for the blind right here. And when they gotta make a corner, they go this way. When you're coming back this way, you get to a step or something to get a warning this way. Everything we they do down here has a reason. Here's, here's the guy at nighttime at Tiananmen Square, and one of the tiles is broke, so he's fixing it. No dump trucks, no jackhammers, no backhoes, just one piece at a time. There's some guys, same thing, they're doing all the repaver work at night in Tenement Square. No concrete trucks, no jackhammers. This is like out of a blue stone, but you can still make your designs in it. It's still intricate and it still, still works. Here's a, here's a nice little idea when you're putting pavers in and you want to go around the tree. Kind of decorative. Chinese thing. There's some uh, cobblestones we're using to go around the street. We're walking up these steps in China. But what I really like about them is they got the same pitch as the sidewalk. That's these pavers. You can see how they are. There's a little drain. And this is on Great Wall of China. Here's some nice paper streets in China. Another paper sidewalk. It's raining out, but you get a good idea. Now this is a little ramp. And this is what I noticed about the ramp. You see how it kind of comes up and there's like edges right there? So you can't go backwards. So it's like a little non-skid kind of idea. So that's the filming I did in China. I want you to notice you didn't see concrete curbs, you seen granite curbs. And when we get to Scandinavia, I'm going to show you that. They had everything set for the blind. Uh, blue stone, they were using like on the Great Wall in that area and in Beijing. Well, that weather is a lot more milder. It's like Washington, D.C. So up here where I live, that stuff doesn't really work. Uh, you have to look at everything in the area that you're doing it in. Sidewalks, 
I just was, I was hoping to film these people putting in the paver sidewalks and they had this whole city block ripped up. Just a couple blocks from the hotel. I didn't see it. I went the wrong way. So we took off that day. I said, great. When I get back in the morning, I'm going to run over there and film them putting the pavers back in. When I got there in the morning, the whole city block was done because pavers are simple. You don't need concrete trucks. You don't need machinery. You don't need this. You don't need that. The whole city block was done. So now we're going to go into Scandinavia. It's the same kind of thinking. So here we go. Here's a typical sidewalk in Denmark. Right over here you can see the curves. And there's all different kind of curves, but this is a typical sidewalk in Denmark. Now I'm here in Denmark again, and all they're doing is fixing the curbs here. Here's all the curb stones, see them? All they do is put the line up right here, and then they put the curb stone down. And that's it, they could use it for a hundred years. You don't have to be putting concrete and forms up and all that other stuff. like after they put it in. So what they were doing was using the same curbs they probably been using for 300 years. And they just rip it up, they have the same modified, they reuse it, they straighten them out, they put the line up and they put it back. In the US, the United States, what we do is we block the traffic, come in with the jackhammers, throw everything in a dump truck, take it to the landfill, come back, reform it, pour concrete again, 25 years later, same thing over and over. But in Europe and China, they don't do that. They use granite curbs, they put it in once and they reuse them again. And the same materials over and over. So now let's just look at the sidewalks in Denmark and we'll go from there. Now these are the sidewalks they use in Denmark, right here. They use these to put these down. And over here, this is uh, what they call cobblestone, just pieces of granite. And this is what goes in between here, something like this. And that's it. Now the next scene, I'm just going to show you what happened. They might have had a water, water line break or a sore problem. So they went to the sidewalk, they had a little machine, they took all the pavers out, they put them on the side, they dug down, they fixed their problem, they put the dirt, the modified gravel back in, whatever you want to call it. Then they just picked up the pavers, put it down, and they were done the same day. You didn't have to rip the concrete up with jackhammers, you didn't have to haul it away, use the same material. If a paver was broken, you just put a new one down. Very simple. So let me show you that. Now I'm back in Denmark and Sweden and Scandinavia. And I just want to show you. If they have a leaky pipe or something's wrong, they just pick it up, huh? dig the hole, put it down, and they're done. I was walking up yesterday. Remember they dug this hole out? And look, they just put everything right back in. They're done. All over with. So that was that. Just pick the old pavers up, dig it out, fix your problem, put the stuff back in, put the pavers in, and you're done. Now one of the arguments I hear is, Mike, you can't do that because there's people with canes and wheelchairs and walkers and bicycles and girls with high heels, so you can't do that here in America. So now I'm going to talk about uh, what happened in America. It's tradition. When you go back into the 1930s up to World War II, they had the WPA where all the streets were pavers and all our sidewalks were made out of bluestone because it was abundant. 
And then what happened, I think, after World War II is they're starting to use concrete. You know, they made concrete ships. They made uh, concrete bunkers. You even can buy a concrete sailboat if you want it. Everybody went concrete crazy. So it was fast and cheap, and they put it down, and it was great. But all of a sudden, what happens to concrete in Pennsylvania after 25 years? Let me show you that. Here's a typical example of what happens with American concrete and all the highways. I just want to show it to you. So in my area where I live, concrete falls apart. It's only so many years it starts falling apart. But if you take granite curbs and you take those pavers, you only have to fix a piece at a time. You don't have to be ripping everything up, throwing it in landfills, putting it in again. It's simple. Now I'm in my middle 60s, so I was around, I work with the old timers and everybody forgot simplicity. I'm going to take you to an example. They're putting uh, these sidewalks in, in a town I live next to, and they've been working on it for three months now. But if that was over in Denmark or that was over in China, they do the same thing in three days, which would take them three weeks here. So America forgot simplicity, so let's look at that and then I'll make a comment after that. So here we are in a corner in Pennsylvania. They're putting new sidewalks in right here. They've been here for over two weeks already. And I don't know what they're doing. They put in new concrete curves, piece of sidewalk at a time. Uh, this is the way they do it around here. Now I'm going to take a fast walk through a town on Route 11. But if you want to fix these sidewalks, you need special permits. So a real fast walk, here we go. That was the old school where they used to do the big stone and this is what the rest of the sidewalks look like Before I make my final comment, let's just go back into Scandinavia and look at the simplicity of the sidewalks that they use. Now this is the style of most of the sidewalks here in Denmark, just like this. This is probably the most uh, used form of sidewalk they use. And you can see how they have the two by three pavers here, and they put the cobblestone in the middle, cobblestone at the end. And over here they have the granite curb. Now this is the entrance to the hospital. And this is all pavers. Here's a different sidewalk with granite and pavers. Here we have sidewalks in the back. So I'm going to make an end comment. You can see in Denmark, Scandinavia, sidewalks are simple. You go through the whole towns, they're all basically the same in one form or the other form, but they work. If something's broke, a little piece, the broke truck, truck picks it up, puts a new piece down, and they're done. In America, the first thing we do, block all the traffic. Then you come in with the jackhammers, you got the backhoes, the dump trucks. New, and then you got to reform it, and they're using uh, concrete trucks, and everything's taking days. Over there, very simple. And this is what I'm going to like it to. It's like hearsay. Someone told me this. He said, back in the 60s during a space race, NASA spent over a million dollars developing an ink pen that'll write upside down in zero gravity. And you know what the Russians did? They used a pencil. So I like simplicity, I like to do it simple. I like food for thought. Uh, there was this guy wrote in, Bill, and he wrote a good statement. And I usually get good comments at the end of the video. I wish I could have put them in every one. But he was a teacher for 35 years, and he's retiring. And, he's, and this is one of his statements he made. I hope I'm saying it right. He says, one of the most valuable things a teacher should do is not just teach the facts, 
but show awareness, teach awareness. Let, in other words, you go around, you see what everybody else is doing, you take the best from them, you take the best from them and use it for yourself. In my town over there, was I, I was showing you those sidewalks. If you go to get a, to get a permit is a, an absolute nightmare. You have to go through all the red tape and inspectors and engineers and this is guys looking at that and everything over there. Over in uh, Europe, it's not that way. You just fix the problem, put the things down, and you're done. So uh, the bet, the only way you get a damn permit sometimes is you have to go and say someone tripped over my sidewalks. Well, we got to get a permit, and you say, okay, if someone trips again, you take the liability. I'll send you a letter in the mail. Then you'll get your permit. Otherwise, it's a nightmare. Ridiculous. So I just want to pass that on. I hope you enjoy my videos. Food for thought. I'm Mike Haddock. Thanks for watching.